in free agency, a lot of NHL people and a lot of Islanders fans were thinking they might go after a big name in terms of the offensive. Mike side. Hoffman being one of them. They tried. They're, they're swirling <laughs> trades for Patrick Line. Are you surprised that they didn't do that? Or do you think maybe there's a plan, maybe with the trade deadline in a shortened season, that they might maybe be able to maybe buy low on a player like that, maybe if a team gets bad right away? I wouldn't say I was surprised. I kind of knew. A lot of us knew what was coming because of the whole cap crunch. The whole flat cap really hamstrung them going into free agency. You mentioned Mike Hoffman. Look, they kept their tabs. They tried as hard as they could. But the whole Matthew Barzell situation really didn't help, didn't do him any favors. But I don't think there's a plan going toward the trade deadline. I think it's more the expansion draft for Seattle when things are really, really going to get interesting. Because there's a few guys on this team who you would expect not to be exposed and expect to be the foundational pieces to be here for the next, you know, four or five years. But even there, they're not guaranteed a spot. Maybe you can call it conservative, but I really think they had no choice. Uh, I mean, you saw what happened with Devontae and the money that he got from Colorado. The Islanders couldn't do that. And they did with the best they could to get so- something valuable for him. And they did. Those two draft picks can really come back to help them in the near future. But they tried, couldn't really do anything, and you got to live with uh, the hand that you're dealt, and that's what uh, Lou and the organization's doing. Mass Mutual East, okay? I don't know where they get these names, okay? <laughs> these are terrible names. It's all about money. It doesn't matter. Just call it the East Division. Uh, whatever. <laughs> the Islanders and the Rangers are smacking a very difficult division because only three teams can make it out of division. There could be a wild card team that could come out of the division. Not likely, especially how talented the Eastern Conference is. You, you're looking at Boston, Buffalo, New Jersey, the Islanders, the Rangers, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, Washington. We expect Washington to make it. We expect Boston to make it. And Philadelphia, a lot of people are saying, is going to have a fantastic season, especially now they have a star goal. Do you think that the Islanders could come out being a league division winner, or do you think they're a wild card team? I think they can win and do it. I think they have as good a shot as anybody to win the East. I kind of blogged about it last week, and I said the Islands are at a point now where they're, they've been under the same system for the past two years, and we've seen how much it works and how successful it is. And going into this year, they ha- they do have a bit of an advantage. You've got Washington, who's under a new coach, and Peter Laviolette, so they're learning a new system. You've got the Penguins, who I think are going to fall off a cliff. I agree. I, I, don't, know, I, I don't know why people think they're going to be so good this year. They, they're they older. People say that their defense got better. I am not impressed whatsoever with their defense. And who who's really scoring behind Crosby, Malkin, and Gensel? I don't see it, but yeah. I think the Islanders do have an advantage. I think the Rangers aren't ready for prime time yet. I think the Islanders still have an advantage over them. Buffalo, New Jersey, they're still what ifs. Buffalo brought in Taylor Hall. That should make them better. The Devils are under new coaching and Lindy Ruff. But they also they added a few they they added a few sneaky pieces. But the Islanders could be a wild card team, but they could be the division winner also. Boston is going to be their biggest challenge, and they are absolutely horrendous against the Bruins. Some of the games are not even worth mentioning because of how bad they are but if they can stick with boston and they can keep their ground and not have a long long like a you know even a a four or five game losing streak because that could really really put them in danger i think yeah i think they can win the division Uh, i think them going to the eastern conference finals i don't think got them the same recognition as it would other teams you mentioned the flyers and the flyers are good but there's a few question marks i I know they have carter hart and he's going to be a star he already is basically They've got some good pieces defensively, but offensively, behind their top six, I don't see much you know, coming from their bottom six. I really don't, not compared to what Washington has or what the Islanders have, especially with their fourth line. But the Islanders can win division if they can stick, if Boston falters, but also if they stick with them you know, for most of the season. Sorokin is going to be play a big part of the Islanders' success. I really do believe it. This kid is going to be a star in the league. Uh, the Islanders did not want to trade him. Uh, last year, in the middle of the season, we were hearing some stories that Sorokin didn't want to play for the Islanders, and then you heard... It's all, it's all garbage. I know. And then Chicago was going to offer him. I heard two first-round draft picks to get Sorokin. There were teams trying to get steal Sorokin from Lou Lamorello, and Lou Lamorello says he's not for sale. So... Sorokin is going to play a big part of the future for the Islanders. He's going to be their superstar. When you talk about superstars that the Islanders lack, you have Matthew Barzell, and now you have this young kid in Sorokin who's about 25 years old, and and a lot of people believe the next star goaltender in the NHL. Are you surprised that it took them this long to come to the NHL? I would say yes and no. Yes, because he was hockey royalty in in Russia, and those kind of guys, when they're on that type of echelon in their home country, they don't want them to leave. And sometimes the player themselves, they they don't want to leave either. So I was kind of surprised it took them this long. But 
you know, he's finally here and he's not going anywhere, hopefully for a long, long time. But I'm on board with what you're saying. He is going to be, he can be a superstar in this league. He's shown it when he was in Russia. We've seen all the highlights. We The hype train is rolling right now with him. And I think he can be a major, major player. Difference maker. Sorry. Uh, Different. Difference, yeah. yeah. Thank you. He could be a big time, big time difference maker for this team. Because we talked about it before, the goaltending situation, it'll play itself out as it does, but Sorokin is the, he's the future. And if Varlamov struggles, he won't let go of the reins, mm-hmm. I don't think. And people remember, have to remember, he's only 25. Yeah, He hasn't even reached this prime yet. And yeah, he hasn't played a game in the NHL yet, but just by what you, what we've heard about him, what we've seen, he seemed, he's ready. He seems ready, and I think he's going to be a difference maker in the ways that the Islanders haven't had someone kind of like Barzell, but uh, they haven't had one. They, they really haven't had one since Billy Smith. I, I'm going to be honest, Rick. Oh, D- wise, yes. Yeah, Chris Osgood. I mean, John Van Beesbrook was there for a year, but he was at the end of his career. They have. I will, sorry, I will fight you on the the Rick DiPietro thing because he was before his all the injuries happened. He was on his way to becoming a I really, can't. really good goalie. I know Rick personally. I played with him. I was a big hockey player. I couldn't stand Rick DiPetro when he went to Boston, and I still can't stand him as an analyst. The guy is a know-it-all, so-called, think that he knows everything about hockey, and now he thinks he knows everything about everything else. I, I never liked Rick DiPetro. I think he was highly overrated for the New York Islanders. I would have never drafted him at one, and then they traded away a superstar goaltender that became a Hall of Famer. So we we'll blame, Mike, blame Mike Milbury for that. Uh, he was he was an idiot. Blame Mike Milbury for a lot of things. So he was that, 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 so. That name is sacrilege in my house. So we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't uh, every, and anytime I see, anytime I see something like a memory about him on Twitter, you know, I just, I cringe. I really do. Well, he got fired. Thank God. So I don't think you're going to see Mike Milbury. The sexist, the sexist stuff that we've heard him say. So thank God Mike Milbury has gone. And we probably will never hear his voice again on national TV. So that's a plus. Rob, it's actually pretty funny too that the guy I did my college show with, he's a huge Islander fan too. He we he made fun of Mike Milbury like nobody ever did between the GM and also Jim just being a bad analyst as it was, studio analyst at the time. He made fun of him all the time. So it's funny you brought that up. And it's also funny you brought up DPS. I mean, he, he, you defended him to death. Yeah. But he no, he totally deserves it. I'm not gonna go back to revisionist history with how he oh he basically destroyed the franchise and it it's now taken them a long time to get back and now that they're under the right management and they have people who actually give a damn about the team and know what they're doing, now you're seeing why they are where they are. And they're only at the beginning of, you know, possibly being uh, close to a stand. They could be, they can win a Stanley Cup within the next few years. And that wasn't the thinking a few years ago. And going back to even when Milbury was around, it, it, that just wasn't the mentality. It was just getting by. Now it's not getting by anymore. The expectations have been raised. And that's a great thing. I know the fans have been waiting a long, long time to rid them, rid the stench of all that crap that they had to deal with. And now they're being repaid in ways that they probably didn't expect, but in ways that should have happened a long time ago. Rob, before we let you go, why don't you tell the fans how they can find you on social media? Yeah, you can find me on Twitter at rtalb underscore. Uh, I write for Isles blog. You can find my stuff there. You can find my stuff at Empire Sports Media. I do mostly Isles stuff, but sometimes we'll dip into the Rangers if, uh, if uh, they permit me. And I also, you know, contrib- I also contribute to the Daily Goalhorn. It's another you know, hockey news site. Mm-hmm. I, you know, do features here and there. And yeah, that's where you go find all my stuff. Uh, I don't think you need my Instagram or my Facebook. We actually just interviewed their founder, Anthony Scultori, last week. Dude. I, he's good, yeah. good dude. I, I, I talk with him a lot. I've been on his show. He's, he's, a, good, he's a good guy. Yeah. Very, very nice guy. He's just too much of a Ranger fan. <laughs> oh, I, oh, I, I spoke with him last week. I, I, I know the feeling. <laughs> But he's a nice guy. I love arguing with him, and uh, he was great. He was a great interview. He had a lot of fun with us, and uh, we want to get him back on. Maybe we'll get both of you on at the same time. That would be. Oh, uh, I don't know if you want that. There might be some uh, might be some low blows thrown. Well, he's a, he's <laughs> I've, a never seen a, I've never seen a guest attack Arrow more than Anthony did last week. It was, uh, it was I came, funny. <laughs> I came back at him, so it doesn't really Where are, you, are you an Islander fan or you're a Ranger fan? I am an Islander fan. I grew up a Ranger fan, actually, until I was 11 years yeah, old. Excuse me? Yeah, I grew up a Ranger fan. Yeah, it, it's funny. <laughs> I, when I was 11, uh, the Rangers <laughs> traded John Van Beesbrook, and then when he went to the Panthers, and then he went to the Islanders, 
a little bit later in his career, I said, you know what? I, I'm not going to jump ship or anything like that. I'm going to stay an Islander fan. And I, over the years, the Ziggy Palfy years, that's when I became an Islander fan. I watched the Islanders just completely choke and choke and choke and choke. Finally, they drafted John Tavares, and, and I thought they were on their way. And then John sure. Tavares stabbed them in the back. So I'll be clear. He didn't stab him in the back. Just... Yeah, he stabbed him in the back. <laughs> he stabbed him in the back. He absolutely stabbed him in the back. I, 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 I don't want to go back to those. Uh, I'm, I'm already past that. But, you know, anytime I could tweak, I love tweaking Toronto fans because it's, it's, they're just they're, they're too easy. Like, just like everyone likes to tweak us, Island, uh, tweak yeah. Islander fans. Yeah. Toronto, like, just throw out the play. Just throw out they haven't gone to the second round in 16 years, in, in 17 years now. And you basically win it. You win the argument. Hopefully, you follow the uh, the Twitter account uh, since the last time the Leafs won a cup. <laughs> it's very funny. There's 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 a few of those. There's a Ranger one. There's an Islander one. There's a Flyer yeah. one. And the Toronto one. No, I don't follow, but I follow the Ranger one. The, the newest one too. They 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 tweet every day. How many days it's been since they last won the cup, and also how many days it was since they lost to the Zamboni driver David Ayres last year. <laughs> that moment will live with the Leafs and their fans forever because that was just oh, an. Yeah. An incredible, incredible, but just so pathetic for for a franchise of of Toronto, like to, for that to happen to them. Yeah, I, I will say this as an Islander fan, I love the fact that that John Tavares can't get out of the first round. I love it, and and he made a big mistake leaving the New York Islanders. Thank God. I was gonna say that game three that they had against Columbus, when Columbus was up three nothing, I actually tweeted before the game was over. I I tweeted something about Tavares and that like. I forgot what it was, but then I saw them come back. Uh, I saw Toronto come back and tie the game and win it in overtime, and people were, like, ready to shoot me because <laughs> they were just like, you jinxed it. This time. I'm like, I'm not playing the games, but I, I get where people were coming from. But, you know, it, it's got – it's like that, like, ribbing that's made, like – Toronto and the – it's a fun rivalry, and, you know, I just uh, as much as I'd love to see the Islands and Rangers meet in the playoffs, if the Islands were to meet the Leafs this year in the playoffs – Oh man, you, you're it'll talking about story. There will be blood and all up the up the yin yang, and it'll be it'll be so great for both fan bases. Yeah, well, I think Sorokin is going to be a big part of the Islanders moving uh, moving this season. I you, think we're going to see. You think they can win the division? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. I don't think they're going to win the division. I do believe the Islanders will make the playoffs. I think you're going to see very, very quickly in the season that Ilya Sorokin is going to be the starting goaltender. He will win the job over from Lamov. Uh, slowly, uh, you know, in the first 20 games, you're going to see that Ilya Sorokin is more talented and absolutely the up and coming goaltender moving forward. And, and the Islanders will go and swing with him. And I think that he is going to be the difference maker uh, moving forward to New York. I don't know I, if it'll be this year, but I think in the next couple of years, you're going to see a huge difference. I, I know he wasn't, I know he's got uh, really good odds. Uh, not, well, not great. I think he can win the Calder. Tro if he, if you know, the way you were just saying, if, if he takes over for Varlamov and he doesn't let the reins go, I think he can win the Calder Trophy. Quite, quite possibly could happen. I think he, I think the Islanders just set up very, very well in the defense and the goaltending. What scares me right now is they, they needed that other offensive guy. I really wanted Mike Kaufman. Uh, we were talking about Patrick Laine, uh, but uh, the I, I, I think that's that's out of the question. I think it's been out of the question for a long time now. Mm. Well, we'll see. I, th I think the Islanders will make a move at the trade deadline. Do not trade any more first-round draft picks. They don't have any. <laughs> they don't have any right now. Uh, please don't. <laughs> I mean, seriously, please don't. Uh, anyways, uh, Rob, thank you for joining us. We'd love to get you on again. Uh, I'd love to be back. We'd love to talk hockey with you uh, as the season progresses and maybe get you on our FM dial uh, here in Long Island and talk a little Islander hockey. You have such a thick Long Island accent, man, but I totally appreciate it. Oh, my God. It's so thick. Even I, even mine is not as thick as that. Holy well, you know, you know. I always said if there was anyone that could play Joe Pesci in a movie about his life, it could be Errol. Uh, well, you know, Pesci, you got to be from Jersey, man. You grew, you grew oh, up in Newark. No, no, no. I'm from here. I'm from New York. No, 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 no. Pesci grew up in Newark. That's what I'm saying. I know that, but I think, if, like, you could – Find a random any any random person like ten different people. Arrow could be one of them to to, to, to impersonate Pesci. I think if there was a movie about him, that'd be crazy. <laughs> Maybe a playing Joe Pesci. I mean, come on, you can't. You to, you, no, you need you need to you need to get the voice higher. Yeah, well, I can do it. I you can do, do it. it. You can do it. I can do it, man. I can do it. I can definitely do it. He also claims he can oh. sing opera. I can sing opera. I can sing opera. That's, but I'm a, hell, that's a hell of a, a thing. To, that's a hell of a quality. <laughs> Rob, thank you for joining us, man. Appreciate it, guys. Have a good one.